بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد We don't plan our deen or dunya and being haphazard may have serious consequences. This is an integral part and constitution of deen of being organized and systematic. With regards to the day of Juma, which is the day of Eid for a believer, we are encouraged to spend the whole night in Ibadah, Dua, Adiyah, Duas are accepted. Then to go early in the morning at Tabkir to be there early for Salatul Jumu'ah. So a question will come and arise that what about for dunya? So that has also been stipulated. But a system has been entrenched for a believer so that they could stabilize their deen and when your foundation is deen then dunya will fall in place. So priority and primarily deen and amal of deen and tertiary secondary is dunya. فَإِذَا قُضِيَتِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ When the salah is concluded, disperse, seek the bounties of Allah. And now, when you are seeking the bounties of Allah, وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Don't forget Allah in your dunya. Don't forget the awamir of Allah in your dunya. Don't forget the masail. When you're in your dunya, don't forget being grateful to Allah for all the bounties in this dunya, etc, etc. So in usul, a principle has been identified, a system. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, كَتَبَ اللَّهَ مَقَادِيرَ الْخَلَائِكِ قَبْلَ أَيْ يَخْلُكَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recorded the occurrences, destiny, whatever is to come measurements before creating the heavens and earth 50,000 years. So this was already in the planning. So planning before doing anything is imperative. When Mu'ad bin Jabal was being sent to Yemen, Nabi Islam was prepping him. Oh Mu'ad, how will you judge between people if you ask to? So what is replied? Bi kitab Allah. With the book of Allah, if you don't find anything in the book of Allah, be sunnati Rasulillah, then I will look in the sunnah in the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So again, prepping and planning. As Arabic saints go, kiwamul aishi husnut taqdeer. The establishment and basis of, of life is good destiny, but wa milakuhu husnut tadbir. But controlling it is through planning. Su'u tadbir sababu tadmir Mismanagement, being reckless, not planning properly is the cause of destruction. Su'u tadbir miftahu al-faqr Bad planning, poor planning is the key to poverty. Man sa'a tadbiruhu ta'ajjala tadmiruhu Whoever prepares badly hastens to destroy himself. So we shouldn't have this mentality of waiting and seeing. When it happens, we will cross that bridge when we come to it. No, 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 no. They say there were three fish that lived in a stream. One was called plan ahead, the other was think fast, and the third, wait and see. So one day they heard a fisherman and uh, News came to them that he was going to cast his net. So plan ahead said, I'm going to swim down the river before that. Think fast said, I'm sure I'll come up with a plan when it happens. Wait and see was very lazy and lax and said, I just can't think about it now. I'm too busy. So the fisherman cast his nets. Plan ahead was able to escape. Think fast and wait and see were caught by the fishermen. So think fast quickly rolled his belly up and pretended to be dead. When the fisherman seen the fish, he thought, so this is a dead fish, this is not good for me. He threw him back into the water. But wait and see 
ended up in the fish market being sliced, shredded and roasted. No trace of him or his generation. So, planning is important. Alama Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam, we're discussing the topic of seclusion and solitude, has mentioned that uh, it is it's two types. One is Amrun Ijabun and Istihbab. One which is compulsory and necessary, another one which is meritorious. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ الَّذِينَ يَخُوذُونَ فِي آيَاتِنَا When you see those engage in false conversation about the Qur'an denying and mocking Allah فَأَعْرِذْ عَنْهُمْ Stay away from them, so abandon them. So the prohibition of sitting with those who deny and mock the ayat of Allah, this is a command. وَإِذِ اَعْتَزَلْتُمُوهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَأْوُوا إِلَى الْكَهْفِ When you withdraw from them and that which they worship except Allah means when you depart from them and follow a different religion opposing their worship of others besides the deen of Allah then separate from them separate from them فَأْوُوا إِلَى الْكَهْفِ Separate from them, seek refuge in a cave distance yourself away from them. So this is the compulsory a needed uh, one. And secondly, where it is mubah, permissible, preferable, mustahab, like how Ta'us has said, ni'ma sawma a rajul, a person who uh, makes his home a place of worship, and he protects his gazes, he protects his hearing, he protects himself from all forms of evil on condition that he establishes Salat with the Jama'ah, he goes for Jummah, etc. He learns the Masail of Deen. With regard to this, Allama Ibn Qim has mentioned that uh, interaction and associating with people, because now we'll have to mix and uh, relate with people, connect with people, interact with people. So he has mentioned four types. The first one is كَلْ غِذَا لَا يَسْتَغْنِ أَنُوا فِي الْيَوْمَ اللَّيْلَ Like food and provision. You cannot survive without it. So thus when the time for your need comes, then you will seek that need and he has mentioned this is the ulama in ilm. Wahum ulama billah. These are the ulama, and uh, this is a cure for the planning of shaitan, planning of the enemies, for the sicknesses of the heart. That those people who speak with the voice of Quran and Hadith, this is combating that. So, this is a food and provision. This mukhalata is necessary and imperative. The second type is Kaddawa Yahtaju ilayhi in dal maral Like medication where a person needs it in a time of sickness. So when a person is healthy there is no need for it but when there is a need then you will take the medication. And this is referring to your mu'amalat, your mu'asharat whether a person has to do business, a profession etc. So when there's a need to work, so we are engaged in deen, and when there's a need to go to work it, uh, for, for procuring dunya, then uh, this is a type of medication. Only when you need it, you will take it. The third type, kadda, like a sickness, like a disease. And he said it is different different types, different stages, and this will be bad company, bad sohbat. La tarbah alayhi fi deenin wa la dunya. You do not benefit in your deen or dunya. So sohbat in the olden days was just bad company. In today's broader terms, we will look at television is bad company, TV, satellite, DSTV, Netflix, internet, surfing the net etc. Spending time on the cell phone in the different platforms, gaming, PlayStation, etc. Anything that will not benefit your deen or even your dunya. 
and you will have khusran in deen and dunya or either so he's given a few examples he said like uh, a person has a sore tooth so that tooth will pain you but once that pain is gone then you are sorted out but certain sicknesses and illnesses are not there that can be alleviated so that's there to stay a person has a, a, a certain disease a certain sickness where there is no cure that one infects your entire system and a person has to prepare for death so there are certain companions where when you go in their company they will harm you for a short time and you can get out of it but certain type of companions are terminal they can be very destructive so we have to be very careful and cautious of that and the fourth type which is uh, destructive and consequential bi manzilati aklisam like eating poison that is very dangerous you'll die immediately it'll kill you immediately and thus he is, he is explained is spending time with the, the ahlul bid'ah wa dalala those people that are astray that invite to haram the mushrikeen the kuffar the innovators etc where they will invite you to jahannam and if you accept their invitation then it is utter destruction so a person will choose solitude but solitude not necessarily means moving to the mountains but solitude can be done in one's precincts one's home etc with regards to this mullah al-qari has mentioned wal mukhtar huwa at-tawassut bain al-uzla wal khulta bis-salihin so the the middle road the, the preferred opinion of the scholars is that when there's a need to abstain from anybody any any person which is detrimental to your deen and dunya then stay far away with them but to associate with the sulaha and the ulama to 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 be in the masjid with salat or the jamaat etc so this this condition a a, a middle road of not complete abandonment and uh, abstention and likewise not total intermingling so ulama have listed five benefits of detachment and disassociation seeking the uh, solitude and seclusion number 1 taqwiya to sila billah that a person will now strengthen his relationship with allah secondly at tafarrugh lil fikr wal istinas bi munajatillah now you will learn to speak more to allah than speaking to the creation when you speak to the creation it will be for good reasons for inviting to allah al khuruj fi sabilillah so you will compromise your solitude and intertwine with society for the benefit of humanity third benefit al ibtaad bil uzla an al maasi a person will get time to concentrate on focusing and abandoning sin and wuda guna etc besides thus this harm a person will be protected from making riba because you'll need somebody to talk to about riba you'll uh, you'll be protected from namima carrying tales You'll be protected from pride and arrogance because you'll you will have to show you will have to show off and you need people to show off. Whereas if you're in solitude, who are you going to show off what? The fourth benefit is al khalas min al fitan wa siyana to din wa nafs. A person will be preserved from all the different trials and tribulations and fitness, and he will be able to preserve his din. And the fifth benefit. السلامة من شرور الناس وحسدهم. You will be protected from the evil of people, from the hasad, from the malice, from the jealousy, from from evil thoughts, from from accusations, etc. So a person will be preserved from this year. So solitude, and we see in the hadith also based on the need and time. As a riwayat of Ibn Amr, when Nabi Ali Salam was discussing uh, the fitness, the period of of commotion and turmoil, when trials and fitness will be prevalent, Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam he said was mentioning to us, and he said, 
إذا رأيتم الناس قد مرجت أهودهم وخفت أماناتهم. That when you will see people, their covenants they have breached, and fulfilling of guarantees, fulfilling of your word, sticking to your word will become rare, and they become like this. وَشَبَّكَ بَيْنَ أَصَابِعِهِ And Nabi alayhi salam intertwined his fingers. So I stood up and I said, كَيْفْ عَفَالُوا عِنْدَ ذَلِكَ What should I do at that time? So Nabi alayhi salam advised that during the time of fitan, what you should do? That إِلْزَمْ بَيْتَكْ وَمْلِكْ عَلَيْكَ لِسَانَكْ That firstly keep to your house Control your tongue. خُذْ مَا تَعْرِفْ وَدَعْ مَا تُنْكِرْ That accept what you approve and abandon what you disapprove. وَعَلَيْكَ بِأَمْرِ خَاسَةِ نَفْسِكْ وَدَعْ عَنْكَ أَمْرَ الْأَمَ That attend to your own affairs, worry about yourself and leave alone the affairs of the awam, the general public and the general masses. In another riwayat, أمسك عليك لسانك How can we save the time, O Nabi of Allah? Control your tongue. Keep to your houses. وَبْكِي عَلَى خَطِيعَتِكَ And cry over your sins. Another riwayat, إِنَّ بَيْنَ يَدَعِي السَّعَفْ فِتَنًا كَكِطْعِ لِلْمُظْلِمَةِ That the commotion, well, the fitnas will be like the pieces of a dark night where a person will be a believer in the morning, infidel in the evening, and vice versa. القائد في آخر من القائم. A person sitting is better than a person standing. A person walking is better than a person running. فما تأمرنا. What should we do at that time? نبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned كونوا أحلاس بيوتكم. Be steadfast. Hold on to your homes. So that's with regards to solitude and its benefits. With regards to interaction, ulama have uh, mentioned five benefits. التعلم والتعليم That a person starts learning and uh, teaching deen. It's number two. التأدب والتأديب Mannerism and etiquette, good etiquette. Third benefit is تربية amal. So a person needs to reform and perfect their deeds. And you'll get an opportunity now to perfect your deeds, perfect your amal. Number four, Nailu Thawab. There are greater opportunities in mixing and interacting with people. And your reward will be multiplied. For example, look at Salatul Jama'ah. Multiplied 27 times. Look at Salatul Jumu'ah. The virtues of Salatul Jumu'ah cannot be acquired when a person reads individually. Likewise, Ijtima'iyya, your amal will be accepted. If one person who read its Salat, if they Ibadah was accepted and Allah accepts the whole majma. So you get the reward and your amal can be accepted as well. Likewise, the fact that a person is giving da'wah and a person changes their life and they get hidayat, they will give somebody else. So in solitude, no matter how much ibadah, and we did the riwayat, how much ibadah can do in solitude, it's very difficult to achieve the status of a person who interacts and makes effort of deen. And number five, to know and recognize different forms of destruction and different planes of plot plotting. The person is not interacting, he will not get news, he will not get information, etc. Problem I have listed that there are rules for seclusion. So if somebody wants to go in seclusion, firstly, he must want to save people from his arm. Don't think so, I'm a Hazrat while I'm a Buzruk. And that will cause pride, and this pride will be our own destruction. So you want to save others from your evil. And uh, if a person doesn't have this, then he can, ulama have written, this khalwa will be a cause of fitna or baliya, or of his own destruction. Secondly is, a person will abandon evil and sin. That should be a rule that I am abstaining. Why? اِعْتِزَالُ الْخِصَالُ الْمَذْمُومَةِ To abstain from all these evil traits, not to eat haram, 
not to be very extravagant, to be patient, etc. Thirdly, Adamul Mubalagha fil Uzla, not to engage so much in solitude that you exaggerate and a person will fall into haram for example if he doesn't make salat with jama'a juma he does not enjoy good forbid evil fulfill the hukuk his his neighbors his brothers relatives etc he does not visit family anymore he does not keep family ties he does not look after his parents so this, this form of solitude and we see nowadays it's exaggeration through social distancing. We don't visit the janazas, people don't visit their parents, they don't even make salam, they don't get their sins forgiven, they don't keep family ties etc. And uh, number four, the ulama have said, أَيَّكُونَ عَارِفًا بِوَزَائِلِ That a person should, it is important to know all the Masail of Deen. If a person doesn't know these Masail, then it is destruction for him. And the rules for associating would be one, to protect your time. Number two, to learn Deen. Number three, to create a support structure. Number four, to leave bad company. And number five, that a person should look for moderation between the two. So in summary, there is no fixed rule. A person should consider all these factors, see what the fuqaha have said, and after mashwara and istikhara, choose the best option. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru dawana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.